And it's the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, known as COPA, met its guidelines of releasing the shooting videos within 60 days. But its work on the case is far from finished. COPA is in the process of investigating the shooting, the officer's use of deadly force, and the actions that led to it. Joining us to talk about the next steps in the investigation are Richard Wooten. He's a retired Chicago police officer and executive director of Gathering Point Community Council. And Sharon Fairley, a professor of practice at the University of Chicago Law School. She previously served as chief administrator of the Independent Police Review Authority, or IPRA, the agency responsible for police misconduct investigations prior to what is now known as COPA. And thank you both for joining us. Uh, both of you have seen the edited police compilation of the shooting video. And Sharon Fairley, uh, just a broad question. What was your reaction to what you saw? So clearly they're trying to help uh, the public digest what, what's in the video, pointing to what they believe are the, the, the key visuals that will be, be relevant to the investigation by you know, drawing the public's attention to different uh, moments uh, in terms of what could be seen on the video. Um, and so you know, that's, that's their point of view about what's important. Uh, but again, that's just their view, the, the investigation is still, as you said, is is just getting underway. And we're the, in order to answer the question of whether the officer's use of deadly force was appropriate or not, we're going to be looking at a lot more than that. Richard Wooten, your reaction to the video. You know, this is another tragedy uh, for our young people in the city of Chicago. And um, it's, uh, it's evident to show that we need some work in the city of Chicago, especially how our police departments are working at this uh, in this day and time. Um, what I saw when I first saw that, just like any parent, you know, you know, I was upset with the uh, what I saw. Uh, it kind of brought some remembrance back on the Laquan McDonald shooting, and you know, we our kids shouldn't have to experience those things, uh, uh, and our, par our parents shouldn't have to experience those. Uh, it, it's still a hurtful feeling right now that I'm experiencing right now, seeing that video. Uh, well, let's take a, another look at the edited police compilation of the video. Again, it's uh, as Sharon Fairley mentioned, it is the police perspective, or at least uh, their presentation of what they've released. There we see a freeze frame of what appears to be a firearm. There we see Adam Toledo uh, when he turns around. Here's another view from a church showing a gap in the fence where Toledo stops and he appears to throw something and then raises his uh, raises his arms and later there is a video shot of uh, of the uh, of, of a gun next to the fence uh, Sharon fairly some people might look at these videos and think well that's conclusive evidence uh, is it well as I have always said ever since I, I've uh, been involved in this line of work that having video evidence is fantastic it's really important evidence but it's not the only evidence that will be considered when evaluating what happened here. And there, you know, there are still a number of ways to interpret this video that will all be informed by the other evidence that, that COPA will be compiling pursuant to this investigation. So I think it's way too early to draw any conclusions about you know, whether what happened here was appropriate or not. There's still a lot of evidence that needs to be gathered. Richard Wooten, as you uh, see that, as you saw that video, what are officers big picture trained to do in a situation like that you know officers are responding in a, a, a split of a second and from the moment that it appears that the gun was tossed to the moment he was raising his hands not even a whole 30 seconds actually elapsed okay and from the officer standpoint what he see is the individual running with a gun you never see the gun being tossed and you know and and, and raising the only view of the uh, right hand I mean the hand that he saw was the left hand so when he's coming up with the right hand, the officer had to make a, a split decision. Not saying it was a right decision, not saying it was a wrong decision, but it just shows that being a police officer is a very tough job. Sharon Farley, you said that uh, the video in and of itself, while helpful, is not conclusive and that uh, investigators will have to look at other evidence. Like what? Yeah, so in these kinds of cases, you're going to be they're going to be compiling uh, all the video evidence and looking at it from all the various angles that, 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 that's, that are possible. But it's also important to understand what the officer knew going into that situation in terms of, you know, w w did he believe that he might be facing a threat 
by, by this young gentleman? What information did he have when he was responding to this scene? And then of course, there's also gonna be, you know, so they can, there can be forensic evidence that's relevant um, that, that they recover from the scene. And then of course, we still, there, there may be other witnesses. We don't know exactly what the other officer saw when, when, uh, when she was there. Um, if she was in a position to be able to see what happened, we're, we're gonna wanna know what, what she saw. So there's still a lot of evidence to be gathered. Richard Wooten, uh, as one looks at that video, it appears that it's possible that the victim may have tossed the gun in the same motion uh, that, he was, uh, that he was engaged in when he raised his hands. Uh, how could that affect a determination on uh, what the, how the officer perceived what he was encountering? You know, I mean, that, that puts the officer in fear of his life. But let me say this here. You know, there's victims on both sides of this here, you know. And, um, I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, bash the officer who did the shooting because I know he's going to be, he's mentally actually disturbed by this. I saw it in a video. I dissected that video, you know, segment by segment just to see exactly what, you know, could have been done differently. And, you know, tunnel vision, you know, is one thing that officers need to learn how to control. And, you know, we got to take a better, uh, you know, angle on making sure that our kids are well protected out here. Uh, Richard Root, let me stay with you because uh, earlier in the day, Mayor Lightfoot said or pointed out that uh, police officers can go through their entire career without ever uh, using their firearm. What do you think goes through an officer's mind in a, in a situation like that where it's, it's a matter of seconds or not even a second before he or she has to act? You know, I spent 23 years with the Chicago Police Department, and I thank God that I never had to use uh, that type of force. And, you know, not to say that I was never put in positions or predicaments where I had to actually respond, but, you know, just like everybody else, officers want to go home at the end of the night as well to their families. And again, it's a tough job being a police officer. Sure. And if, I, if I might add, I think, you know, that's what, what, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that the analysis here is we're, we're trying to understand, you know, the legal question is whether or not the officer was reasonable in his belief that young Adam posed a threat to him. Not, not that, that that was a correct belief, right? Whether or not it was reasonable under the circumstances. And so it could be that he, mistake, he, he, was, he was mistaken in believing that the young man still had a gun. But if that, mis, if that belief was reasonable, then it, his, his use of force will be considered it will still be considered um, justified under the circumstances. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a complex legal question that requires a lot of analysis and, and taking all the circumstances into account. Sharon Fairley, Richard Wooten, thank you both for your insights. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Of course.